Today on this show, I'm going to give you so many altcoins and so much altcoin alpha that you're almost guaranteed to make money. And I don't mean like small money. I mean like huge money, like money bigger than this trade, my best trade that I've ever taken. I'm going to make you, I'm going to give you so many altcoin calls on this show that that's how much money you're going to make. But the reality is that even after I give you all these altcoin calls, 99% of you are going to take that money and you're going to lose it all. And I'm going to show you today why you're going to lose it all before I give you the calls. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm definitely going to give you the calls at the end of the show, but I first got to make sure that after I give you the calls, you actually make money and land up keeping the money that you're going to make. So today's probably the most important show we've done this bull market. So strap in and let's go. It's a true story. It's a true story. I mean, I had lots of friends and even myself. I mean, I landed up making so much money in the previous two altcoin bull markets that I was a multi, multi, multi millionaire. The reality is how much of it did I keep? Well, I kept a fraction of what I, I actually made. And the truth is that that's not only my story. For those of you who've been here for multiple cycles, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people in crypto that land up making a lot of money. They land up making life-changing money or wife-changing money, right? But then if you talk to them at the end of the bull market and you say to them, well, what if you got to show for this bull market? The reality is that most of them land up losing all their money and they land up hating crypto and they land up getting flushed out. In the first cycle, that's what happened to me. I landed up making a couple of million dollars. And when I came out of my first cycle, I came out poorer than when I actually started in crypto and I had to start again. In the second cycle, I got a bit smarter and I landed up making a lot of money. And well, I landed up keeping a lot, but, but not as much as I could have kept. And now I'm going into a cycle where I'm fully, fully, fully prepared and I have a plan and I'm going to show you exactly what that plan is because we are right now at decision time. The decision is whether you want to make a lot of money or whether you're going to keep a lot of money. That's a decision that we have to take and we have to take that decision today because we are very, very, very early in the bull market. I'm going to give you a whole lot of altcoin calls at the end. There's a whole lot of them. It's not, it's not difficult to make money on a market like this. When you look at the bubbles, and yeah, let's just look at the, uh, at the, this is the weekly bubbles. When you look at a market like this and you see the tokens are going up 130% in a week, 83% in a week. Uh, look at, at BitTorrent up 100% in a day. Look at this. It was up, well, 96% today. Um, let's look at the, the next 100. Um, when you start looking at the next 100 on, on, on the weekly and you see these, these kind of numbers or even on the monthly, and you see these kind of numbers, 500%, uh, 1,000%, 600%. When you look at these numbers, what you're realizing is that you don't have to be a genius to make money in this market. And we're going to make it easy for you. We're going to bring you the altcoin calls on a tray as usual. As usual, we're going to bring you those altcoin calls. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to make sure you keep the money. Because if I just, make, if I just give you money, if I just give you altcoin calls where you're going to land up making money, you're not going to be able to keep the money. So that's what today's about. I promise you there's a whole lot of altcoin calls at the end of the show, but let's just prepare for those altcoin calls. I've got to show you a couple of things. So listen, if you are new to the channel, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't been here before, let me tell you how this place works. The more likes, the more excited I get, the more excited, and I'm quite an easily excitable guy. The more excited I get, the more alpha I give. The more alpha I give, the more calls you get. The more calls you get, the more money you make. And then after today, the more money you actually keep. So that's how this, this place works. So if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. If not, smash a like button. Let's get the show on the road. But before we get the show on the road, the Christmas hat is back. The three boxes are back. Now, I don't know what's in the three boxes. I can tell you, I don't know what's in these three, these, these three boxes. What I can tell you is that Sheldon walked into this room. He opened the boxes earlier and he went, holy shit. I can't believe you guys are doing this. Now you're talking. So I think in one of the boxes, there's a big prize. If you want to win the prize, what you need to do is you need to go below. You need to open a Bybit account using a crypto banter link. And if you've already got a Bybit account using a crypto banter link, you're already on the list. So you don't have anything to worry about. You need to have at least 100 bucks in your account. You need to have at least 100 bucks in your account. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a winner from, from this list of account numbers. Once I pick a winner from the list of account numbers, 
that winner will receive the prize in the box. And between now and Christmas, one of the boxes will have $100,000, but we're also giving away incredible, incredible, incredible prizes. So this is going to happen every day from now till Christmas. Go and open an account on Bybit. It's super, super, super simple. Here it is. I'll show you how to quickly way to do it, just so you know what we're talking about. Here it is. Uh, here it is over here. You click here. Click on the, on the show. You go to the link over on Christmas. here. One of the boxes will have $100,000. So you go to the, you go to the um, here we go. You, go. you click on this link over here and you get into the, into the, 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 the competition. All right, let's get into the, the, the markets today. And as I said, the markets are crazy, crazy, crazy today. The altcoin markets are absolutely, absolutely ripping. In fact, this is the most fun that I've had in crypto in a long, long, long time. This is uh, the most fun that I've had in crypto in a long, long, long time. So let's just look at some of the movers. Celestia, this fucking train ain't stopping. $9.78. I think it was, it was over $10. Doge finally has liftoff, 10.4 cents. I'll show you one of my trades today. I'll actually show you also my best trade that I've ever taken. BitTorrent up 100%. Beam, we're going to talk about Beam. We're going to talk about AVAX today as well. All these to talk about today. Um, I'm also going to show you, as I said, the best trade that, I, that, I've, that I've ever taken today. But first, let's look at this market. This market is on a rampage. You've got Bitcoin at 44,250. This thing just keeps on moving and this thing ain't going to stop. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't try and get in the way of this moving train. Because if you do try and get in the way of this moving train, you will get destroyed. You cannot try and stop this train. You cannot go short in this train. I was watching the market last night. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So I was watching the market. The, the open interest starts to open. So I'm thinking to myself, look, these are degenerate gamblers who want more access to crypto, right? Then half an hour later, just when I thought that this was the, you guys taking uh, leverage positions on Bitcoin, half an hour later, we see a green candle and the green candle just flashes out all these people, which means that these people were all short, okay? These were all shorts, destroyed. And then I did a little bit more digging and what I could see is that there have been $614 million in short liquidations in six days. That means that every day, $100 million in shorts are getting destroyed, destroyed. And you can see that's the, that's the data that shows that. It's scary to be short in this market. You don't want to be caught short in this market. It's the craziest market I've ever seen. The momentum is just building and building and building. And every time I think we're going to take a step back, A, there is no leverage, and B, the shorters just get destroyed. The market has so much momentum that I have three short positions open, which I think are pretty like obvious short positions, and I'm shitting myself. In fact, no, I've got two short positions open. I had an... Um, uh, UST position open. You know about that. I showed you that one. But if you look at UST, UST has gone back down to 4.5 from six six and a half cents. So I, I banked my money there. I think I banked about 10 or $15,000 uh, on that short. You saw that short. That was a short that I've had open for a couple of days. I've got this FTT token short open right now. And I'm so scared of this market that even, even shit coins like this, even like crazy, crazy, crazy coins can actually get destroyed. And so you've got to be very, very, very careful trying to short this market. Do not stand be, Do not stand in front. You can stand in front of a moving train, but don't try and push the train backwards. Don't go short. Because if you do, you will get destroyed. You will join the graveyard of all our friends that have got $600 million in the last six days of shorts that have actually been liquidated. Go with the trend. Right now, the trend is up. Right now, the trend is your friend. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. That's what Carl always says. Um, and that's exactly what you must be doing. The way I see it, the way I see it, this momentum, this pump, this good mood, this energy, this amazing, this amazing sea of green, this amazing sea of green is actually a reward. This is our reward. This is our reward for, for enduring what was probably the worst, craziest bear market in the history of bear markets. I know it doesn't feel like it, but I want to remind you that this is what we went through, guys. Like, this is where the bear market started in November 2021. It started coming down. It came down pretty fast. Just when we thought we had momentum, uh, Terra Luna happened. Then Three Arrows Capital happened. Then uh, the cascade that Three Arrows Capital had, where all the Genesis, the BlockFi, uh, all went down. 
And just when we thought that that was all finished, that, then we got the FTX collapse and with it the Solana collapse. So if you endured all of this for 649 days, the longest bear market in the history of, of crypto bear markets, then the truth is that this pump that you're getting right now, this is our reward. This is the reward for FTX, for the collapse of the regional banking system and the USDC, DPEG, the, the, um, the $2 trillion bear market on the stock market, the 500 lawsuits against crypto, the multiple crypto bankruptcies. The, all of this is our reward. This is your reward for, I said yesterday, this is the, f it's not the reward, it's the first part of the reward, because the reward's still going to come. This is just the, the amuse-bouche of the rewards, the starters of the rewards. This is, I said, th this pump is the first part of your reward for the unwavering conviction that we had while everyone else was telling us to pivot to AI. And when I say everyone else was telling us to pivot to AI, it wasn't stupid people. It was Jason Calacanis, who's, who's one of the most... Um, one of the most respected VCs in Silicon Valley, he made this tweet on the 8th of June, 2023. He said, if you're in crypto, pivot to AI. I don't know if you remember it. Let's quickly look at where the price was on the 8th of June. Um, yeah, it was the price, 21 June. Price on the 8th of June, it was a bottom. It was 20, 25,000. So this is where he told you to leave and get into AI. This is where he told you to leave and to get into AI. Now, some people left because they were so scared. Others, like us, continue to be here, and now we're getting the, the reward for, for actually being here. This is Jim Cramer in um, February. This is Jim Cramer in February this year. Uh, uh, Bitcoin went up today, and I could argue that now it can't even be uh, held in banks. Bitcoin's a strange animal. I, I will say point blank. I think it's being manipulated up. It's very, it was being manipulated the whole time by Sam Bankman Freed. So please don't make me, please don't assume, therefore, that it's not still being manipulated. And I would sell my Bitcoin right into this rally. And believe me, I had been a believer one time in Bitcoin. Not here, not now. Uh, Bitcoin went up today, and I could argue... So that was Jim, and that was in, in February. So that was, I don't remember the exact date in February, but just let's quickly, for shits and giggles, let's just go back to February. 20,000, so he's missed 100% pump in, in Bitcoin. This, this, what you are experiencing now is, and if you're here, and if you're euphoric, and if you're, if you're making a lot of money, and if your portfolio is at an all-time high, just remember one thing. You deserve this. You earned this. You had the conviction to buy when others were so scared. You were listening to banter. You were watching banter while we told you to buy. And if anyone says that we didn't catch the bottom, if anyone says that here at banter we didn't catch the bottom, we've got proof. There's tons of it, but I'm going to show you one, one thing. So Sheldon, exactly a year ago, made a call that said, why 99% of you will miss this Bitcoin bottom. This was exactly a year ago. Look, here's the video over here. It was on the, let's quickly just see how you, how you check that. Let's go back here. Let's check, let's check the date. Either price goes slightly higher now first, and then just okay, settles so that was a little the bit, second holds of those December, moving averages, and then we shoot. Let's quickly look at where we were on the 2nd of December, 2022. That is where we were on the 2nd of December, 2022. And that is when Sheldon said, that is when Sheldon said, guys, 99% of you are going to miss this Bitcoin bottom. And we were here and we were buying when it felt super, super, super uncomfortable. We've got the receipts to show it. Okay. Here's the receipt. That is a look. Just look at the, the entry price there on Bitcoin. Look at the entry price. 19,359. This is the best trade that I've ever made, to be honest. Um, 19,359 entry, more or less, that price was more or less here, somewhere around here. That's when I, when, when I actually made, made the trade. There is your trade, ladies and gentlemen, over here. And that's almost $1 million in profit. And when it does get to $1 million in profit, I will close that trade live on the show so that you guys can actually see taking $1 million in profit at the time when it felt super uncomfortable. Because at that time, let me remind you, it was the worst time to buy. It was the most uncomfortable time to buy. But we had conviction. So when you see this pump and you see your portfolios going up, I want you to remember two things. First thing is, you deserve it. 
And the reason why you deserve it is because you had conviction while everyone else was scared and everyone else was waiting for the bull market and everyone else was calling for 12,000. You had conviction. That's the first thing that I want you to remember. The second thing that I want you to remember is it's just the beginning. And that this is just the first part of your reward. This is just the first part of the reward. This is not the reward. These, this is the amuse bouche, the starters of, 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 of the returns. So remember that because if you're here and you, and you did buy when it was uncomfortable, then you deserve this. Congrats. In the, in the chat, congratulate yourselves. Congratulate each other. People saying Sheldon the carpenter was like Jesus. Sheldon the main man. It was the whole of banter. I just pulled up. I just pulled up one one big um, one video, but there's there's, te there's tens of videos around there where we said to you buy. We actually posted our buys. You know this. I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell you. As I said, this is your reward for buying when it felt uncomfortable. The truth is though that now it doesn't feel uncomfortable to buy anymore. In fact, I think it feels more uncomfortable to sell. Right? I mean, what do you guys feel right now? Do you feel it's more uncomfortable to buy or more uncomfortable to sell? sell. More, uncomfortable. more uncomfortable to sell. Scarecrow number two? Sell. We have a new scarecrow in the office, but he's not a scarecrow. He's got an intern. He's making cool music for the show. Is it more uncomfortable to buy or more uncomfortable to sell now? I don't know anything. He doesn't know anything about crypto. Well, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. If someone says a moose bush means literally it amuses the mouth. So this is the, the amusing of the mouth of the bull market. So tell me in the chat whether you, you believe that right now it is more uncomfortable to buy or more uncomfortable to sell. Because you've got to do the thing that feels more uncomfortable for you, right? And for me, at the time when I made the biggest trade that I've ever made, it was because it felt uncomfortable to, to buy. Now, we're in a situation where the media is starting to cause a frenzy around Bitcoin. It's not uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable to buy now. Not when the media is talking about. Not 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 when the media is talking about this. Question about the the having. I've heard it called the having or the having, but yeah. either one. We're getting to that in April, I think, right? Yeah. Um, and that's been a bullish thing before. I sort of wonder: is it the same thing though? Is that already getting priced in, or is this is there something technical that actually happens that would make it be priced in closer to the event? So, after not, the event? Um, so what we've seen historically is that the 12 to 16 months after a happening is the best performance of Bitcoin. So that's what everybody's thinking about. Um, this time, you know, this time might be different because the price of Bitcoin's higher. We now only have, I think it's 900 Bitcoin a day that come out, so that gets cut in half. It's not a lot of Bitcoin, but what it does do is it makes Bitcoin more scarce than gold. So for the first time in history, you have an asset that is more scarce than gold. In what way more scarce? Uh, let's call it a stock to flow ratio. So uh, the amount of Bitcoin mined every year divided by the amount, uh, amount outstanding, Good point. same with gold. Good and point, but, be but it doesn't feel uncomfortable to buy when CNBC is telling you that for the first time in history, Bitcoin is more scarce than gold. We spoke about the relationship between Bitcoin and gold yesterday, and we'll carry on talking about it tomorrow because I've actually got some, some data which I want to show you. The other thing is you've got the other media channels, mainstream, Bloomberg saying, Bitcoin topping 42,000 is just the start of a fresh crypto cycle that will push the world's biggest token, above $500,000, in what adherents say is the new monetary order taking Wall Street by storm. Thank you, Bloomberg, for the incredible, incredible, incredible coverage. But we don't listen to the mainstream media because we are ahead of the mainstream media. But nonetheless, what I'm trying to show you is that right now, it doesn't feel uncomfortable to buy. It feels uncomfortable to do nothing, right? Right now, the most uncomfortable thing is not to buy and not to sell and maybe second in the order, it feels uncomfortable to sell now, right? That's, that's what it is. And remember, the market, you've always got to do what feels the most uncomfortable. Right now, the most uncomfortable is to do nothing or to sell. That's, that's where we are in the cycle. And as I said, I have no doubt that we are going into a parabolic, parabolic bull market like we've never, ever, ever seen before. I've got a couple, of, couple more data points to prove it, as if you need more data points. First thing is... The first time the RSI crosses 70 on the two-week chart marked the start of, start of the bull market in the last three cycles. And guess what? The RSI on the two-week chart has just marked the start of the bull market. So let's, go, let's quickly go and look at, uh, let's look at the RSI here. RSI, and let's quickly go into the two-week chart. Um, Oh God, okay, we can do, okay, it's fine. I mean, I, I, think you get, I think you get the point here. I think you get the point here. The second thing that I'm actually seeing now 
I'm seeing that the USDT market cap keeps increasing, which means that participants outside the United States are starting to put in a lot more money into crypto. And you also have the global liquidity cycle very, very, very much on our side now. We, sp we spoke about this for the last three days where we said right now the global liquidity cycle is just starting to turn. And altcoins, well, crypto, but specifically altcoins, are very, very, very much correlated to the global liquidity cycle. So when I put all these things together, I add in the stablecoin market cap, and I looked at the stablecoin market cap means right now we bottomed at about 123, and right now I think we're at about 129, 128.5. You can see more money is coming into is coming into crypto, as you can see. The thing that worries me, though, is that people are getting a little bit too euphoric and that this market is becoming a little bit too easy. And I'm starting to see the same ridiculous targets that I used to see in the previous cycle coming up now. Remember the previous cycle where we, we all believed that plan B made us all believe that Bitcoin was going to get to $100,000 and then crash? And we crashed at $69,000? Starting to see a lot of talk on that. Starting to see a lot of these. Let me know if, if you're also starting to see them. But I'm starting to see a lot of these. You know, we could be 10th of February 2024. We could be at $135,000. Okay? That to me is... is is people that are drunk on what's going on. And so I think that what's going to happen is this is going to happen. This is a, a profound, profound, profound tweet. I think two theories I believe get destroyed in this Bitcoin, bull, Bitcoin cycle. All-time highs get broken before halving not, and not after and diminishing returns. And he's saying, I believe two theories I believe get destroyed. So he says, we're not going to get an all-time high before halving. And we're not going to get diminishing returns. What does he mean by diminishing returns? Diminishing returns means that the return in this cycle will be less than the return in previous cycles. So if you look at, at the, the first cycle, which is this one over here, to, hold on, let's just get a ruler here. And you can say that that one took us all the way up to here. That was a 53,000%, 52,000% return. If you look at the next cycle, it was a 10,000% return. And if you look at the next cycle, it was only a 1,000% return on Bitcoin. Now, what he's saying, and I think he might be right, I think this is the cycle where we don't get to uh, an all-time high before the halving, but I think he may be right, and we may actually get the biggest returns that we've ever actually got on Bitcoin. We don't get the, the diminishing returns on, on Bitcoin. So I think that's, that's what's starting to worry me. Now, <clears throat> We're not here for Bitcoin. We're here for altcoins. So let's get to altcoins very, very, very quickly uh, we, we, because that's what you guys actually came for. And I want to give you guys what you, what, what you came for. And in, when, we, when it comes to altcoins, I'm going to say the same thing. I think that we have just entered a raging, raging, raging altcoin market. I think this raging altcoin market takes us all the way from a market cap of where we are today or where we started 400 billion and we go beyond $2.2 trillion, which is, by the way, the total market cap times two, I think that that's where we're going in this altcoin cycle. So the specific ones. I think it's very, very, very natural what's happening here, that Bitcoin is running first and the dominance is going high. I think that that is what we actually want at this part of the cycle. So this doesn't stress me at all. The fact that the Bitcoin dominance right now, I, I went back and I checked the Bitcoin dominance versus total three versus Bitcoin. And it doesn't worry me. I, I've, done the, I've done the homework here. It doesn't worry me. I think that this bull market, everything is going to go way higher than you ever imagined. And, you know, that is because there's going to be more adoption. There's going to be more money. And it's also because of what, what Vinny said. Vinny said, don't make the mistake of tracking prices from previous crypto cycles and using that as a predictor. Market caps are far more important as we've had two years of inflation that the market has absorbed and that reflected in the price. Look for the breakout opportunities and undervalued coins relative to market caps. For example, a $4 render puts render in a breakout for all-time high market cap. Filecoin, 20%. So he's saying, just look at the market cap. Don't look at the price because we've had a lot of tokens that get released. And I think that the market cap is actually going to, to, to grow. But you need to make sure that you're looking at market cap and not at price. Because sometimes a token at the same price has a to double as high market cap because we've had all the inflation actually coming out. The other thing about this altcoin bull market is that 
You don't need to buy the bottom. You've missed the bottom, too late. You just need to believe that the price will be higher than the price that you pay for it based on the fundamentals. We're in a season where lows don't exist. You can only buy higher and hopefully sell higher. And Celestia is a prime example. You could never have caught the Celestia lows, but if you did, if you bought it, there'd been multiple, multiple, multiple opportunities for you to make money on Celestia. Let me quickly show you that chart. So forget about trying to, 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 to catch the lows. You ain't going to catch the lows. I mean, how, how is this chart? Holy shit. Okay, so again, you could have caught Celestia at any point along the line here and you would have landed up making money. And that's exactly what that tweet is about. Great. So we will all make money. But now we have to make a very, very big decision. Because making money, honestly, 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 it's so fucking easy. Tell me, Sheldon's phoning. Why is Sheldon phoning? Sheldon, what's up? Brian. What's up? They're voting, they're voting for the wrong box. They must choose box number two. They're voting for the wrong box. They must choose vo vote box number two. Yes. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Love you. You bro. heard it. That was Sheldon. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Say that again, Sheldon. Say that again. Say that again. Okay, he said, you guys are voting for the wrong box. You must vote for box number two. I haven't seen what's in the boxes, guys. I haven't seen what's in the boxes. I don't know what's in the boxes. Sheldon says vote box number two. Okay, as I said to you, right now making money in crypto is the easiest thing in the world. Okay, tell me, just you tell me that you don't, that you haven't made money in this week. And then we're going to send you to the, to the slower class. Then we'll do like a, a different stream for the slower people. Okay. You, you, everyone's made money. Everyone's portfolios at all-time highs. You cannot tell me that you've been here for the last month and you've watched all these token explosions in the top 100 or the top 200. Look at this. You can't tell me that you haven't made money in this market. Everybody is making money in this market. Everyone is aping into this market, okay? Someone says if your portfolio isn't at all-time highs, you better change the strategy. I see that the leverage degens are leveraging because it's so easy to make money you can't lose, just throw a dart at the, at the dartboard and make money and make money. And then uh, it, it's so simple and you can make it on 10x leverage. The market is in a, in a very crazy mindset. This is, the, this is the mindset of the market. Show me your top conviction plays for the next six weeks. That's the mindset of the market. The, the mindset is we had to make quick money. We want something that's going to run in the next six weeks. You notice it didn't say, show me your top convictions play for the cycle. He said, show me your top conviction plays for the next six weeks. Shows you the mindset. You've got a bunch of leveraged DGENs who think they are geniuses because every single thing that they touch is making money at the moment. Doesn't matter what it is. In fact, the worse it is, the cheaper it was, the higher it went up, the more money we made. I'm not kidding. The worse it is, just, just get this. The worse it is, the higher it recovered, the, the, the lower it went. Therefore, the easier it was to pump it up. The higher it went, the more, of a, the more money we made. We're making more money on bad coins than we're making on good coins. Seriously. Come on, you know this. I don't know if you tell you this. I don't know if you tell you this. But the reality, the reality, the reality is that now it's decision time. Today, here on the show, today, right here today, we make decisions, we make decisions together. It is decision time. Everybody is going to make, make, make money. It's easy to make money. Even if you make mistakes, you will still make money because we're still in the beginning of the cycle and you've got the whole cycle to go. So, you know what? Let me show it to you. Even if you make a mistake here, right? If you made the mistake here, yeah? cool, doesn't matter. You still got all this way to go. The mistake is quite forgiving, right? There's all this moment. There's such a long way to go that even if you buy something 10% cheaper, 10% more expensive, doesn't matter. You're going to still make bombs of cash, bombs and bombs and bombs of cash. The market is very forgiving. But ladies and gentlemen, it's actually decision time at the moment. It's decision time right here, right now, today, it's decision time. And let's make a decision right now together. The decision that I want you to make is a very simple decision. Do you want to make a lot of money in this crypto bull market? Or do you want to keep a lot of money in this crypto bull market? 
I know it seems like a very easy question. Do you want to make a lot of money or do you want to keep a lot of money? But it's not as easy in real life because anyone who's been here for multiple cycles will tell you that we all made a lot of money in the previous cycle. But a lot of people, a lot of our friends aren't here anymore. They aren't here in crypto anymore because they lost it all and they got destroyed and they lost their houses and their cars and everything else. Even me, I made a lot of money in the previous crypto bull market. You know this, I've, you've, I'm pretty transparent. And on one day, I lost over $100 million. I've got to ask you again, now that you have some context, do you want to make a lot of money in the crypto bull market? Or do you want to keep a lot of money in the crypto bull market? Because they're very different. They very the, the way to make a lot of money is go in on high leverage into shit altcoins and you will make a lot of money. And I'm watching it now. I'm watching people make, make huge, huge, huge money. But I'm willing to guarantee you one thing. Those people are not going to keep a lot of money. There's a difference between people who are going to make a lot of money and keep a lot of money. And the difference actually lies in three things. Literally, the difference between getting rich and staying rich in crypto comes down to three things. And let me tell you, as someone who got rich and lost a lot of money, I can tell you that I'd rather not get rich and lose it because the pain of, of having so much and losing it is the toughest pain that you're ever going to have to get used to. The idea is to keep a lot of money. And the difference between making a lot of money and keeping a lot of money is three things. And I, I remember I said to you, I'm gonna, we've got, we're going to talk about 10 altcoins today that are going to make you a lot of money. But you guys, and you're all going to make the money. But nine, and, and, and that's going to happen at the end of the show. But 99% of you that actually make this money, and I guarantee you you'll make the money. If not, write me a letter and I'll money back guarantee. The difference between making money and keeping money comes down to three things. Number one, do you have a thesis? Number two, do you have a plan? Number three, do you have the discipline? If you have the thesis and you have a plan and you have the discipline, you will make and you will keep a lot of money. If you have a thesis, but you don't have a plan and you don't have a discipline, you will make a lot of money, but you won't keep any of the money. If you have a plan, a thesis, and discipline, you're going to walk away here with, with life-changing money at the end of the cycle. And you won't have to watch Crypto Banter ever again, because you'll be so rich that you won't need the, you won't need the alpha that we, we give you here. You won't need to listen to Alex Becker to make your millions anymore. Because you'll have so much money, you won't know what to do with it. But you've got to listen, you've got to have, you've got to have a thesis, you've got to have a plan, and you've got to have discipline. Okay? As far as a thesis goes, we've spent days and days and days telling you how important it is for you to identify the narratives that you think are going to run. Have a thesis. What do you believe in? Do you believe that, for example, that ETH is going to outperform the cycle? If you do... There's 40% upside left for you to capture. Or are you like me and you believe that there's no real reason for ETH to exist anymore? And I believe that, by the way. Other than the fact that ETH already exists and ETH has all the legacy and luggage that it comes with, I don't think that there's a thesis for ETH to exist, exist anymore. Therefore, I'm playing my chips as per my thesis. I'm playing the deeper narrative. I'm playing the gaming narrative because that's my thesis on which tokens are going to run. If you don't have a thesis you're going to get wiped out because you're going to just invest in every, every new shiny object that comes along the way. You're going to invest in it. The problem is that you're going to have no idea what to say no to and what to say yes to. So the first thing I suggest you do is write down your thesis. Write down your four or five narratives that you think are going to work in this bull market. Mine are gaming, gambling, Deepin, Solana, those are the narratives that I think are going to run. But hey, you make your own narratives. Also, make a list of narratives that aren't going to run. My narrative is that ETH is not exciting this, this bull market. Yet, unless something changes. And if that's your thesis, then my other thesis is I don't want to invest in centralized exchanges. I don't want to own KuCoin, BNB. I don't want to own, I don't want to own those tokens. I think that the, the authorities are going to come and clamp down on those, on those tokens. 
and I don't want to be a part of it. Have a thesis. In your thesis, write down which narratives you think are going to work and which narratives you think ain't going to work. That's the first part. Remember, I said there's three parts. Thesis, plan, and discipline. Once you have a plan, once you have a thesis, make a plan. What's the plan? Plan is, when am I going to start buying this narrative? What exactly am I going to start buying? So we have a plan. Here is the plan. Hold on, I'll show you. Um, here we go. Here's our plan. We have a, 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 a modified ETF plan, I've called it. That are, these are the tokens that I actually want to be buying. Okay. My plan is to load up on these tokens. I've written it down. It's on paper. And I suggest that you write down your plans. And I'll show you in a second. Uh, that comes in, in the next part of it. So have a thesis. Have a plan. I wanted to show you something about the strength of a thesis. Last year, when Solana was collapsing, absolutely, absolutely collapsing, FTX went down, Solana collapsed. My friends at Multicoin, by the way, I'm an investor there, they said here, they said, um, uh, I've got to find this for you. Okay, our core thesis remains unchanged. The Breakpoint Conference further reinforced that despite this, people will state publicly that Solana ecosystem cannot be survived without SBF. We don't think that this claim holds merit given the breadth and depth of the activity in the space. However, you should expect to see more conjecture and it will likely increase the volatility of Sol. While the FTX Binance situation is obviously not helpful to Sol in the near term, we do not believe it impairs the thesis over the investment time horizon of this fund. And they said basically, despite whatever FUD there is, our thesis is that Solana is still going to continue to, to outperform. So what did they do? They carried on investing in Solana projects. Here it is. And they invested in amazing, amazing projects. They invested in Helium, which is up huge. They invested in Solana itself. They invested in, in Layer Zero. They invested in Aletheria.ai. They invested in, 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 in all of these. Majority of them Solana. Who do you think is smiling now? Obviously Multicoin, because they had a thesis. Have a thesis. Have a plan. Let's talk about a plan. A plan is, when am I going to get in? When am I going to get out? And how am I going to get in? And how am I going to get out? Now, I know because I get a lot of FOMO, like you guys get a whole lot of FOMO. And one of the things that you can do is you can take, you can DCA into a token and you can DCA out. So I made a mistake, I'll be honest. I got a bit scared and I sold some of my Doge bags because I just felt like there was too much leverage in the market and I needed to reduce my overall positions and I landed up selling some of my Doge bags. Problem is I sold such a small part because I, my, my, my plan was never to sell the whole bag. My plan was just to reduce my position slightly, which means that now that the price of Doge is actually going up, I'm not losing I don't have extreme foam because I sold my whole position. Have a plan to DCA in and have a plan to DCA out. So I'll show you, I'll show you some examples of, of DCA plans. Let me, let me show you some examples of DCA plans. Here we go. The inverse DCA. At 70%, at 70K, sell 2%. At 80K, sell 2%. At 90K, sell 5%. At 100K, sell 15%. At 110K, sell 10%. That is what you call an, an inverse price DCA. It, what it is, is it says, I'm going to sell every time it goes up. You write down your plan. Because if, if it's not on paper, it doesn't exist. You write down the plan and you execute according to the plan. Here's what I'm buying. Here's when I'm taking profits. Hold on. Here's when I'm taking profits. Here's when I'm taking profits. What are, you what are you buying? When are you buying it? When are you selling it? You write this down now. Because when the prices start going up, you're never going to want to sell. You're never going to want to sell. Um, here's another plan. Profit-taking formula. If the coin increases by 50%, sell. 25%. But get this. Instead of getting complete FOMO, Put 50% of your allocation into blue chips and 50% into stable coins. That way you're out, but you're not out. So I showed you this before. I'm taking 50% of my profits into USDT and 50% of my profits into Solana. So that's, so that's point number one and point number two. Have a plan, have a thesis. So have a thesis, have a plan. Okay, point number three. 
this is the point that I struggle the most with, and I know that you guys struggle the most, the most with um, with this plan. The plan is the, 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 with this part. The part is to have discipline. I'm the worst when it comes to discipline. I'm emotional as hell. I see the market pumping, and all I want to do is buy in. I'm gonna give you two tips that actually really, really, really work for me. Number one, number one, write down your plan. Because if it's not on paper, it doesn't exist. And if it does, if it is on paper, what I recommend you do is give it to a friend and let the friend have a copy of the plan so that you're accountable to your friend and, you, and your friend is accountable to you. Find a crypto buddy, find a crypto buddy and share your plans and then police each other to execute on the plans, right? I mean, you know what they do in some stock trading firms? They give the stop loss either to the computer or to an outside party and they say, when this happens, execute. And the reason why I do that is because if you want to change your stop loss, you have to phone them. And that's like quite an embarrassing act. And you chances are you're not going to do that. The other thing, which I really, really, really find helps me in this, uh, in this, di in the discipline, because discipline is my worst, is by far my worst. I've got a thesis. I'm very, very, very high conviction on my thesis. And I have an amazing, amazing, amazing plan. And I'm executing on my plan. Problem is the part I get fucked on is the discipline. Every single time I get screwed on the discipline. So what have I done now? I've created another account and I've put like five to 10% of my crypto portfolio into this other account, right? It's separate from my core holdings account and my other accounts. And I call that the, the non-disciplined account. And basically what I say to myself is, if you get FOMO and you can't avoid the FOMO, if you want to go crazy and take 10x leverage things, all the things that where, I'm, where I have bad discipline, take them in the other account. And if you're right, you can turn the 10% of your portfolio into 100% of your portfolio. But if you're wrong, then your emotions won't screw you over for the 90% for the of your portfolio. They'll only screw you over for the 10% of your portfolio. That for me is the biggest change that I've made to my trading style. I've got these burner accounts. I put 5 to 10% of my crypto into these burner accounts. All these pants, the foo-foos and all these dreams and all the other pants that I've taken, which were not core to my thesis, it's my fun account. Those pants come from the 10% account. So if I destroy the account, great, then that is what my emotions did. And if I can 10x the account because, because the FOMO got me and I, and I was right, fucking... Then I've, then I've got two crypto portfolios. Trust me, trust me, trust me. That's the best thing that you'll ever do. I've just done it. Anyway, so as I said, guys, the, I, I, you know, I don't know if I should do this because I know the guy's actually watching the show, but regarding discipline and having a strategy, I always talk about a friend of mine. His, his name's Greg. I know he's watching the show. He's a crypto DJ now. And I remember when we were young and we used to go to a nightclub, the guy had no plan and no discipline. And so... While we all had a plan and discipline and we all picked out one or two goals in the beginning of the night that we wanted and we then spent our whole plan and discipline to try and bag that one or two goals that we were going after, Greg had no plan. Greg, I know you're watching, bro. He had no plan. He used to walk into the club and he was an unfocused person, an unfocused dog. He used to run around, go for this goal, a little bit for this goal, a little bit for this goal, a little bit for this goal. End of the night, nine out of ten times, Greg used to go home alone. Okay, you got to have discipline and you got to have a plan and you got to execute with, on the plan with discipline and then you'll go home with a girl or with a guy if, if you are a girl, if you are a girl. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to show a picture of Greg. I know he's watching. He's married now. He finally obviously became a bit more disciplined. He knows, he knows. Greg, I know, I know you're watching. I know you're watching. I know you're watching. Anyway, let's talk about... Um, some things that are happening today. That's how we're going to speak about altcoins. Now you know how to make money and then you know how to keep money. Yeah, the Imran says the shotgun approach. That shotgun approach didn't work well for Greg in, in, in the nightclubs. And it's not going to work well for him in crypto. And I really hope, because I know he's a big crypto degen uh, guy. Greg, Greg getting smashed. He, he wasn't getting smashed in the day, I can tell you that much. She's going to kill me. If you are like Greg, just tell me in the chat, be like Greg or don't be like Greg. Okay, uh, someone says joining in Seapoint. Speaking of joining in Seapoint, tomorrow night, Thursday night, it's the banter Christmas party. It's the internal banter Christmas party. But if you want to join us, we are going to be at the Grand Cafe at the beach. 
uh, tomorrow at about 9 p.m. So come and join us for a couple of drinks at around 9 p.m. You're more than welcome. You now know. So yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's talk about, I did, I did tell you there's going to be lots of altcoin alpha. We are running out of time. So let's try and get, let's try and squeeze the alpha. Um, so what is the alpha? Lots of things happening today. Uh, gaming, gaming fucking exploding. Later on today, in about an hour, we're going to do another gaming session on In The Game with Hustle on the other channel. And we're going to continue to develop this list. Remember, we, we made this list last week. So we made this list. We need to update this list because a lot is happening in gaming. You, you know this. As, as this tweet says, super up, super volume, 293 million in the last 24 hours. Star Atlas volume, 74 million. PYR volume, $100 million. The volume is coming into, into, into gaming. Then... Um, you had this big announcement from Merit Circle and Pantera. Remember, Merit Circle launched Beam. Beam is the new gaming chain, which is optimized for gaming. And if you look here, you will see that Beam, let's quickly look at the daily. I'm sure Beam is up a lot. Um, hold on, let's look at look for Beam. It was up a lot. There we go. It's up 15.63% today. The chart of Beam is parabolic. Look at the chart of Beam. This is today. Look at that. Okay, so... Um, this is pumping because they've made a, uh, uh, um, a, a uh, partnership with, pa with Pantera, which is one of the biggest VCs out there. We will talk more about this on In The Game, which is the channel in an hour. You meet us in an hour on the channel. Can you put a link to the video, please, sir? Okay, there's a link to the video below, but don't, don't click the link now because then, then you won't be here for the end of this show. Okay, um, Doge, we said, showing relative strength. Sheldon reckons there's a target there of about... Um, uh, 16, 16, 17 cents. There is a problem. Yesterday we spoke about the Audi, Ordinal's uh, um, narrative that is playing out, which is the NFT narrative on Bitcoin. It seems now that some of the core devs are actually trying to kill that narrative. So specifically this guy called Luke, Luke Dash Jr. He's, he's a Catholic husband and father of eight children, believe it or not. Okay, He says they want to fix this bug and when they fix this bug, it will take away ordinals. When he did that, the price of Ordin of Audi actually crashed. Now, I think this is an opportunity. I think if they continue to crash the price of this whole ordinals narrative, that's when we actually start aping. You see, the price was at like $60, $64. And now look at the price. The price is now $42. So watch this ordinals narrative because I don't think he's going to be able to kill the, 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 the narrative. And so I think that this FUD may actually be very, very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, then another thing which happened today. So Alex Becker tweeted, Cedify, he's now part of Cedify and Cedify up is a 271 and part of Paid Network, two launch pads, which will help you actually get um, uh, into the IDOs when the IDOs actually start. So full disclosure, I hold Cedify and I hold Paid Network. So you, you need to know I hold both tokens. I'm not telling you to buy it because it's up 100% today, but I am telling you that I hold this for the bull market because I want to get into because I want to get into the IDOs. I want to make sure that I actually he says IDO season here. Coins that will give a nuclear returns are just now preparing to enter the market. Um, launch pads, Cedify and Citycap, Citycap and Paid Network are going to fly like the last one. And so he's he's actually. He's actually purchased a whole bag of these things. Uh, so have we. We've also got a bag of these things. Solana, we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, Inspect launch. I did tell you about Inspect. I told you the other day that it was going to launch. And if you could get in, you would make a lot of money. If you did, congratulations. It's 20x of people who bought the IDO. Um, we are in this season now. Don't go and buy it now because you are the profit, not the profit. The profit, as we spoke about yesterday. All right, that, that's it for today. Tomorrow we'll do more alpha, and in an hour we meet on Hustle's channel, on, on, on In The Game, which is Hustle's channel. We meet there, and we talk about, um, we talk about uh, the gaming sector, and there's a lot of gaming tips today. There's a lot of gaming calls today. All right, <coughs> before we go, before we go today, before we go today, here it is. It's the Christmas promotion. How it works is very simple. There are three boxes. You pick the box. I pick the, the winner. There's something in each box. It can be up to $100,000. In one of the boxes, there will be $100,000. Question is, is it in this box? And today's winner, if you want to enter this competition, guys, remember all you do is you sign up for Bybit using the link below. If you've already got a Bybit link, you automatically qualify. Today, we are going to the bottom of the list because yesterday I went to the top of the list. 
And today I'm going to number 6x. Oh, no, wait. They said I must go to this one because these are the people that have 100 bucks in their wallet. If you don't have 100 bucks in your wallet, you can't play. Okay, we're going to row 371. Wait, you can't see that, right? So, row 371. 276-9843. Three, three. That's the thing. If you want to be this, 276-9843. Two, two, seven, three, three. Okay, now the question is, which box was picked? Josh, which box was picked in the in the in the So box number two was picked. That bloody Sheldon. Okay, so let's see what was in box number three. Because it's not the winner is not box number three. You lucky you didn't choose box number three? Because you would have got a, what is it? It's a Mario Kart. Okay, so you're lucky, you're lucky it wasn't box number three. Okay, box number one, box number one, box number one. What was in box number one? $1,500 was in box number one, but you didn't choose box number one. I'm breaking the studio. Every time this hits a light, it hits a microphone. All right, what is in box number two? That is going to be given to account number 2769843. What is it? Why was Sheldon so excited about this? Why the hell was Sheldon so excited about this? Holy shit, you want a PS5? You want a PS5? So if you are account number um, uh, 2769849843, you just won yourself a PS5. Giveaways at cryptobanter.com. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you got screwed. I think this is amazing. We will add BitGet. We will add BitGet for those people who are in the UK. And we, we, will, we will add the other exchanges. But for now, sign up with a Bybit account or a BitGet account. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. I'll see you guys again in an hour on Hustle's channel. Until then, trade well, my friends.